Welcome to Multi-Unit Franchisee Succession, How to Grow and Build Value, a video series where two industry leaders share their insights on the challenges and strategies of franchise business growth and succession planning. Jeff Bannon, a succession planner with the Rawls Group, and Aisha Vascaro, president of American Franchise Academy, delve into key topics such as attracting and retaining talent, managing inflation, and preparing for multi-unit franchisee succession. Tune in to learn from their experiences and expertise on how to build long-term success and profitability in your franchise business. At the core of it is creating a, uh, a, a an awareness of what is your current reality. Um, and we like to use SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and go through a process um, that helps define where you currently are as an organization uh, relative to all the external factors that are going to impact your business. Um, you know, as we were just talking about a few minutes ago, um, there's a lot of business owners who are sitting, you know, with a lot of capital and in, in, in the business and looking at potential growth opportunities and things like that. And you're also looking out at the marketplace saying interest rates are going up, cost of capital is going up. Um, you know, there's a lot of people saying that, you know, we're going to get back to a quote unquote normal market. So as you start thinking about that, some of the, the key steps um, we recommend for all business owners um, at some point is to start creating a separate um, asset base for yourself, um, external from the uh, from the business. The uh, goal there is to say that, you know, um, I'm not overly dependent um, on my standard of living in the business and start preparing your organization to run um, tightly, uh, probably the way you used to when you started. And so I think from, from organizational preparations, it, it's absolutely, um, take the capital out of your company that's not required. Uh, and therefore, you're reducing the, the risk of, of lawsuits and things eating into that. Uh, separate it out, create another bucket of money um, independent, and then teach your organization to run effectively lean with uh, processes and, and, and uh, protocols to support you know, maintenance of business profitability. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, being a lean machine, it, it definitely will help you become uh, resilient when it comes to your business. Something else that we like to focus on a lot with our uh, franchise business owners is having a very deep understanding of the unit economics of the model that they are managing, whether it's one brand or multi-brand. Uh, uh, we have found that many franchisees do not completely understand the dynamics of the business that they own. And being able to really, truly understand the impact of revenue, you know, up and down or, of, of labor costs and everything that comes with it or cost of goods, like all of the impacts of really every line item and the profit and loss statement so that they know what the unit economics of the model that they're running is will allow them to be able to move faster uh, ahead of, you know, the wave when they realize things are moving in one way or the other. And many times people just, you know, look at the profit and loss statements just for, as, a, as a way to pay taxes and not as a way to really make smart decisions on their business, you know, uh, every month um, once they get that information. Ideally, you want to have some sort of a dashboard week to week, but for sure, then in the month, that P&L that gives them where they are compared to where they should be when it comes to your economics Um then they, if they don't know that, they are not able to act. They might miss opportunities that if they were able to capture them will allow them to be resilient and overcome challenges because they're making moves and decisions before other people just because they are have that deep awareness of the unit economics of their business. I think that that's one of the key, key um, elements for you to be able to have healthy long-term businesses because really, regardless of what business you're in, if you are understanding how it works, then you can act upon that and protect your business. And so for, for us, the deep understanding of unit economics of what makes the business rock <laughs> is what is where you need to go. So it's it's really crucial. A hundred percent agree. I, I think that um, you know, as as we are getting back to more realistic environments, um, I think poor operators, people who aren't doing those types of things will be exposed. And, you know, as you talk about growth opportunities and things like that, um, it does open up the market for um, people who are looking at KPIs regularly and tracking performance weekly and keeping keeping the pulse on all the major indicators within their own company um, really puts them in a position to take advantage of those who either don't do that 
Um, or as we get back to it, a lot of people that don't have a succession plan that have had a good run of success, look at it. We're at the top of the mountain. It's a great time to sell. I don't feel like going through the heartache of, of another challenge because I'm just tired of it. Um, there's going to be a lot of a lot of opportunity in the near future. Mm, I think it's already happening, Jeff. I, I already hear people already thinking, you know, I'm, because of the history of where we are in franchising, having it be booming in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Right now, a lot of people are looking at exit strategies. And we know of a lot of children that are taking over their parents' businesses. And a lot of those parents didn't didn't um, foresee the need to teach them management. They taught them operations. They taught them how to be in a unit and, and operating it, but not seeing the big picture. And so, and so that is definitely uh, crucial association planning. And, you know, something else is, is having a strong culture. If you have a strong culture where the people in your organization uh, respect and care and admire you as their leader, because you have been the leader they have been looking for, because you have been the leader that allows them to grow, to feel good about themselves, give them opportunities uh, to show, you know, their skills and feel recognized whether they do every, every day, you know, that strong culture would allow you to overcome a lot of things. I know a lot of franchisees were able to overcome, you know, past uh, tremendous challenges a lot because they had a very strong culture and the people truly fallen and believed in them, regardless of what was happening outside of the organization. And so if you as a leader, um, you know, are in touch with your people and are, you know, there in the front lines and building relationships with them and they know they can trust you and follow you, uh, that will definitely help you overcome anything that may come. Yeah. Yeah. I like to say that kind of it comes back to the why question. Why are you going to take more stores? And the more people that understand that the motive here of being in the business is greater than just making a profit um, helps is one of the first steps of creating that culture that you're talking about. Succession planning allows you to create more control over the future you envision. By proactively addressing possible, probable, and potential issues, you can create many options at your fingertips. Do you have a question you want to discuss with an expert? Feel free to reach out directly to Jeff or Aisha at the email addresses listed on the screen. This is only one out of our eight episode series focused on strategies to grow and build value in your business. Continue listening to the series now or come back for more. Each topic featured may want you to learn something new. Franchisee Succession, How to Grow and Build Value is a part of the Rawls Group's Advancing Your Business, People, and Legacy Conversation Series. 